are now not only connected to doing Twitch, but also on... Hi, Jason. Thank you so much for the follow. Wow, we've only been on 30 seconds. This is wonderful. Okay, so obviously this must be working out very well. Um, <laughs> right now what I'm doing is I'm checking. Kevin Becton, thank you for the follow. Wow, all these follows just, just rolling on in. So basically what I'm doing is I'm testing to make sure that... Ricardo Rodriguez, thank you for the follow. Okay, good. So this is showing. All right. So the only thing is, is that with the Facebook part, thank you for the follow, Liz. It's like, what, Liz is not following? Wow, everybody just following? All right. Now, I don't know how Facebook and um, thank you for the follow, right? Um, I don't know how the Facebook and the Twitch is going to tie in together when it comes to the sounds and the chats and everything else. So I'm not, I'm not sure how all that's going to tie in and come into play and stuff like that. So learning curve, that, that's what's kind of happening here. And, uh, but basically, and they told us, you know, about tying everything in and being out live on Facebook and on Twitch at the same time, which I figure is nice, you know, because not everybody has Twitch, right? So now it looks like, okay, so it's all people who like the page that it says, well, if it's going to sit there and do that all day, that's going to end up being quite a challenge to focus on getting things done. And then they sit there and show all 4,000 something of his names. <laughs> but thank you for the follow, even so. So basically what I'm doing is I feel like working on this bus. This is Collapse Industries. This is the Alien Visitor. Actually, you know what I could probably do here? Let me see if I can... Where's that alert box? Let me see something here. Does it let you sit there and do for one thing for Facebook and one for Twitch doesn't look like it does. All right. Hello, Game Father. How are you? Okay. Cat Christian, hi. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, it looks like it stopped for now, sitting there announcing every single person. Oh, I shouted out Kathy. I meant to shout out you. <laughs> Your buttons are right by each other. There you go. But we love Kathy, too, so we'll shout her out, too. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little congested this morning. So, um, I believe this one is called the Alien Visitor, if I'm not mistaken. This is Collapse Industries. Uh, Collapse Industries, if you love a Viking, if you absolutely love... Uh, weird stuff, monsters, aliens, stuff like that, then uh, Collapse Industries, definitely the company for you. Thank you, thank you. So I already kind of started on it. What you see here is Prussian blue mixed with cobalt purple, okay? And what I did was I went over the whole thing. This was last night because I was excited to do something to it, you know. Sometimes you just have a piece and you're just like, I need to paint it right now. And that's just kind of where I'm at, you know. So basically, I went over it. I thinned it down with the Aptilong Matte Effect Thinner. I thinned it down a, a bit, making it kind of like a thick, a thick wash, if you will. And then I went over the whole thing. And uh, I waited a moment, and then I took a eyeshadow applicator, which I threw away because it was full of oil paint, and I, that's how I wiped off all this excess. So basically, I do that first with the oils, is whatever's going to be the real dark shading color, I start with that and go over it. The interloper. Thank you. Okay, I'm bad with names on some of these things. I think I have the alien visitor then up there. The one with the, it's the, is that the one with the space suit then? Because I get them confused. I'm sorry. But anyway, Collapse Industries is awesome anyway. So you should just check out that site anyway. Um, so basically, Impending Duff has liked the stream. Yay! Thank you, Duff. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm not sure if when you guys chat through Facebook, 
if it comes through on our chat here in Twitch. So if anybody sits there and tries to say something and I miss it, I'm sorry, but I will check after and any questions you have, I'll, I'll answer after, you know, and I'm not sure if any of the chat stuff, like the news for your guys' chat shows on Facebook at all. So thank you, John, for liking the stream. You're awesome. And uh, so I know the likes come through. So that's, that's really cool. And um, so I'm not sure also how it, wait, okay. I see it on the screen. I don't see it in the chat box. So thank you for doing that that test, Josh and Joe. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so I have to look at the screen then, and I have to look at the chat box. So if anything comes around Facebook, I'm going to see it on the screen. Yes, we're trying out doing both, Halo. I see Halo's chat. Oh, my goodness. There she is. This is awesome. So I'm trying. Yeah, it. Halo, check on your Streamlabs OBS. It, it put an announcement. It's in the little globe icon, and it says enable multi-stream. And it has it. It's automatically set for me to sit there and pick Facebook, so that way you guys could see it through the Metalhead Minis page, which I figure is nice. But you can also, I think, have it set up to have you on Twitch. I mean, not Twitch. Obviously Twitch. Duh. Okay. YouTube or... Um, another some other platforms they had this other one I, I couldn't remember for the life of me what it was called but yeah so this is what I did thank you for liking the stream Bob so basically that's what that's what I did here is I already did the blue shading and let me show you the reference art that I'm doing it based off of it, it's it's really trippy and crazy thank you Jan for liking the stream so yeah so now I know how the chat comes through now what I need to know is if it affects our Twitch sounds at all. So let's mess around with this. Thank you, Jonathan, for liking the stream. Halo, oh shit, I'm doing that next week for show. You totally should, anyway, because you're like so awesome and talented. So people should like never miss out on your stuff like ever. So I want to see if this affects our commands for Twitch. And it doesn't! Yay! This is good! Okay. <coughs> So then there will be a difference in sounds. Cool. Awesome. <coughs> also, if you do an emote other than like, it doesn't show up. Okay, that's good to know. So now we'll know. All right, so this is, I was looking up alien artwork just for funsies. I do that sometimes. I'll look up different artwork on different things. And there was this really trippy looking artwork of an alien. I think they tried to take this alien and kind of make it into sort of an Indian um, deity, so to speak. But I love the colors in it. And so that's what I think. Oh, you hearted the stream? Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Thank Hello, you for telling me. Gypsy Jan, thank you so much for following. Um, so, yeah, so this artwork is really, really cool. Now, I'm not going to do... Good morning, Red Dragon Model Works. Hey, are you streaming, by the way? I know that you do, um, you know, that you post stuff. Hold on. I do look at weird crap. Yeah, see, he can totally attest to that. I look up all kinds of artwork. You will be after January. All right, then let's get Red Dragon Model Works on the right track, and let's give him a follow on Twitch there. There's his link. You know you know the man. He, has, he does amazing model work. Thank you for the like, Josh. So here's... Here's the artwork. Now, I'm not going to do... You're very welcome, honey. Um... Love you. So, I'm not going to do exact colors. So, for example, well, you can kind of see it. You have to really look at it to see it. But what's happening here is there's a little bit of yellow mixed in here on the highlighting to kind of reflect off of the golds that are there. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do some light flesh color instead with that blue, and I think that's going to look really good. Same thing a bit up on the cheekbones there and definitely on the front of the oh. nose. So we're definitely going to do that. Thank you, Mark, for the like. You're so sweet. Thank you, thank you. 
Yeah, no, I can't take credit for this, sir. I, I wish I could, but no, that that ain't me. But yeah, I don't honestly know who did it. It didn't say, but it was uh, it's 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 under like trippy alien artwork, and that's yeah. And we're gonna do the eyes in black. Thank you. Everybody's putting all these likes. Okay, so obviously this was a good idea that I did. Okay, good. So yeah, so basically there's going to be purples underneath here. You see that I put the blue underneath already, but we're going to add some purple too. And there's going to be uh, some, some pinks uh, and purples up in here. I'm not going to do the freehand artwork there in, in the front. Well, because first of all, that's that artist's thing. Um, and I'm not sure I'm going to put anything in the front. What I'm really trying to focus on doing is just having stuff on there that really stands out color wise and then the eyes we're going to basically do that whole onyx black so that way the main focus is the colors in the skin and stuff like that so i'm thinking that that's what we're that's what we're going to do okay but first let's give red dragon model works a follow so we don't forget <coughs> All right, I'm trying to make sure not to. Red Dragon Model Works. It doesn't show you. Wait, did I look under the wrong thing maybe? Let me see. Channels. It said no results found. Unless it's case sensitive. Red Dragon. Oh wait, I didn't capitalize that D. See, that's why, man, that's why you're trying to get us wrong. Model, no. Capital M O model. Let me see if it comes up this way. No results found. Why is this? You should come up. All right, so let's get some oil paint on here. Mm. Also, BT Dubs. This is what we finished yesterday. Thank you, Anja, for, for liking. Is it Anya? I think it's Anya. Anya, Anja. I'm sorry if I say your name wrong. Please don't kill me. And um, we finished this yesterday. The Christmas Cobalt from Tomb Guardians. Made them all Christmassy and put them in snow. Because for Christmas, he's going to, I guess, grant somebody wishes or do some healing spells. He's a shaman, I guess, healing. Yeah, so we'll do that. And this is going to be the subscriber giveaway prize this month. <clears throat> So on New Year's Eve, we'll still do regular time before you all go out and party. But this will be the subscriber giveaway. Isn't it cute? Thank you, Mark. I got to remember to keep looking at the screen. Say hello to my little friend. Thank you, Creature Painter. I know. I noticed that. Twitch did that. It was like two people just dropped off the follow. And I was like, what? I will never kill you. You're so wonderful. But but wait, is the right way to say your name? I'm sorry, because I don't want to butcher your name, especially because you have a beautiful name. Is it said Anja or is it said Anya? I want to make sure I say it right. So, yeah, this is the subscriber giveaway. Subscribing, for those of you not familiar, if you have Prime, if you, especially if you have Amazon Prime, then you get one a month, subscribe a month that you can give away to somebody for free. So then that potentially means you get this free. Or... It's just five dollars, so yeah, five dollars a month. Why not, right? So just so that you guys are all aware, let's put some oil paint on this puppy. Let's do it. All right. So let me grab some colors here. So we know. So we got. I'm gonna put Prussian blue back in case we need it for blending in some stuff, and only some of it's still wet. Actually, is it still enough I can use? Yeah, there is. So then I'll leave the Prussian blue alone because I'm not gonna need a lot of that at all. I don't think. So we got that. And we definitely need <clears throat> flesh tint. That's a definite. I don't party. You'll be partying with us then. Excited for after the holidays. Want a lesson from you from Gamer Dead. Oh, thank you, Creature Painter. Yeah, dude, let me know. You know, I'm surprised. There are some people that got those and like... But you know what? A lot of people do that. You'd be surprised. Like sit there and get gift cards, I mean, and then they just don't redeem them. They don't do anything with them. You'd be surprised. A lot of people, a lot of people do that. So there, we're going to do some flesh tint. Not too much because also, <clears throat> I'm 
I love these oil paints. This is Aptilong 502, and I'm sorry it's hard to see. It's because of one, I have one bulb out. I have to go get the another bulb. And this is light flesh tint. Or this is light flesh tone, sorry. <clears throat> and I use it kind of for an off-white, too. I'm buying painting lessons from you for my birthday. Ooh, birthday! We love birthday stuff. So with oil paints, you want to sit there and make sure there's space in between because you're going to be doing mixing as you go along, usually, and stuff like that. So just make that a habit to do that. <clears throat> Actually, so there's going to be... I need the Viridian Hue, I think. Let me see here. <clears throat> I don't know why I need to be so congested for. This is terrible. Uh, is the feeling like the crap? Let me see. Let me see this Viridian here real quick. Cause I'm gonna, yeah, okay. I can use that. Do a little bit of teal going on. Viridian hue is fun. See how it's got that tealish kind of look to it? It's like green. It's teal. It's like a teal that's more on the green side than the blue. What up, Bill Neary? Oh my God, you haven't been on my streams in like forever. What are you doing, dude? And I'm trying to get used to now. I have to look at the screen to see the Facebook ones and look here to see the Twitch ones. So don't mind me if I miss a, if I miss a um, message. Please don't kill me. I love you. Thank you for the host. Show enough. you the best. I don't care what no one says about you. I mean, nobody says anything about you, but I just I just say. Um, let me see here. Do we want to put some y'all? Let me take a look at this artwork real quick, see what we got going on. I know for sure we need to get purple. I mean, maybe we could do some yellow in some kind of regard. I don't want to do yellow for lips, though. He doesn't have any lips, so that would just be silly. So, yellow. I definitely need magenta, and I have magenta here. I actually have magenta here in oil paint. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Hold on. Ooh, I have this blue-green here, too. And yellow. We'll pull out the yellow. We're going to pull out all the stops, dudes. That's what we're going to be doing. Actually, instead of doing blue-green, let me grab this. <sighs> Turquoise lights. This will be fun. <clears throat> I don't need this blue. <clears throat> Although, I do need purple, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab red, because I'm going to do the mix to get it. Alright. So Ab to Long and Yellow. Well, I'm at work right now, but I saw the go live, so I dropped in to say hello. Just been super busy lately. Oh, all right. Well, as long as you come by and say hello, that's all that matters. We just miss you, that's all. We just miss you and hope you're doing good. So we got this, and this is Ab to Long, the their fantasy line of oil paints. This is turquoise lights. And I'm putting the, those two relatively near each other, and you'll see why as we go along. I kind of already have these things planned out. Thank you for the like, Brian. <clears throat> magenta. This is Abtalong oil paint in magenta. And I can mix these colors, but I love Abtalong paint so much, and I also get them as gifts. Because like uh, I got, I've gotten Abtalong oil paints for Valentine's Day, I believe it was. I think it was Valentine's Day, and I get them for my birthday, and, and I'm just like, yes, we can never have enough oil paint. Wait, I want to use a different red. No, I don't want to use this red. This is red Primacolor, which it's not. It's a little. It's going to be a little dingy, and I want more vivid happening here. So we're going to do. And I have a whole big case here for my oil paints too, because I just I love them. I love them. Them and my fancy heavy body acrylics are all in here too. You yeah, but you know, as as we do more of these, you'll you'll see that I have like a ton of this crap. Warm red. I can do that on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a little warm, but we're not gonna use like a crazy amount of that anyway. So <clears throat> all right, let me double check myself. White. Nope, not in the not in the slow drying acrylic. I need it in the oil. Hold on. White. 
You always need white. Nope, not this one. I picked the wrong thing. The golden open acrylics and the Abtalone white is like almost the same kind of packaging. So Abtalone and Snow White. Chris Spots, painting in oils is like sipping whiskey and relaxing. And acrylics is like, <laughs> I love it. Yes. She's like, oh, the paint. Yes. A little bit of white because we're going to use it in the highlighting process. I'll be off next week. Good. Can't wait. Thank you for the like, Ralph. All right. So let me see. Oh, wait. I'm missing purple. The cobalt purple. This is Grumbacher. Got this at, um, what was the, Jerry, Jerry's Artorama. This is cobalt purple. And the reason why you see the two sides there, it's not because it's like tricolor coming at, or like double, duo color, like out of the, the, the thing. It's, if you mix it with black, this is what it looks like. Thank you, JT. Um, if you, if you mix it with black, you get this cobalt color. If you mix it with white, you get a lavender color. So, and Violet picked this out, so. Violet picked out Violet. Thank you, Dallas, for the, like. So we're going to put some purple here because we're going to need that for the shading part. Cool. Cobalt purple, though, by itself is a really nice, is a really nice color. It's like a, a royal purple, if you will. Thank you for the like, Meg. All right. <clears throat> Feel free to share the stream, too. I think I'm going to wait to paint my first miniature until I take a couple of intro lessons. I haven't painted many stuff in years. That's fine. And then next, but, but yet, yet you're sitting there and you're all rocking it with sculpting and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's take a look at what we got. Mm. So <clears throat> here's the real fun part with the oil painting. You want to use synthetic brushes. That's primarily what I use is just synthetic brushes, okay? So here are the brushes that we're going to use for different reasons, right? So to apply most of the colors on, <clears throat> this is just a Studio 71, just a cheapy brush. And I'm sorry that the lighting's out. It's because I have to get another bulb. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. So this is a Studio 71, just a cheapy, cheapy brush. And uh, Amazon had a deal on it where if it was an add-on item and you got a pack of them and they were like $3. So that's that's part of where this came from, and it's a it's a synthetic cheapy cheapy brush. This is a one of my uh, it's a Citadel Games Workshop small dry brush, but I like the way the point comes, and it's really good when it comes to doing smaller spaces. So like if I have to do anything under the eyes or over the eyes or in the small details in on the chest, this will be good for that. This is known as the Filbert brush. Filbert brushes, when it comes to doing oil painting, at least for me anyway, is really, really useful. And I basically use the Filbert brush primarily for the blending part of things. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap on a bunch of color. It's going to look real funky there for a minute. You're going to be like, what is this woman doing? And then I'm going to come in, and then the Filbert's going to come in with the assist. And then we're going to sit there and start blending stuff together. And then you're going to be like, whew, I thought Lynn was losing her mind and trying to paint drunk for a minute. Say no to crack, Lynn. So, yeah, no, th then, it, then it all comes together once you do that. And then you have a Cotman brush. And this is a Winsor Newton. And it's really nice and soft. Really soft. You got to take good care of these ones. But the Cotman brush, and the reason why it's so nice and soft is because, thank you, Nick. Um, I hope you're well, by the way, sweetie. I haven't heard from you in forever. Um, yay for coffee. And so basically the reason why this is so nice and soft is because you use this for doing the light blend. Like you touch super duper lightly on the model. And this is, and what it does is it takes out when you do it right, you know, putting it on very gently and going in like small circular motions where needed and stuff like that. In some places, you just got to kind of dab a little bit is because you're taking out the brush strokes for the blends. And that way the blends look nice and smooth. See? So yeah, so you'll see. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to go over all this. It's going to be it's going to be a good time. So now this is where you're going to think I'm on crack and I'm going to sit there and just start slapping color on. 
So, and also as we go along too, I have some thinner in here. This is odorless turpentine. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna use it for, you're gonna see me use it in between to clean the brush. And also, if we need to do any thinning, actually, let me do that first so I don't forget. Because sometimes I do it as I go along, but now that I'm showing you guys, I should probably make it a habit to do things in some kind of an order, right? So keep in mind, too, since now we're trying to connect Facebook to this and we're trying this out, I have to look at the screen screen and I have to look at the chat at the same time in order to catch. So if I miss a chat, please don't think I'm ignoring you. I promise I'm not. So I'm putting some Aptalong Matte Effect Thinner. One, to smooth out the consistency of the paint a bit as it pertains to the kind of model I'm doing. And two, so it doesn't look too shiny. However, now oil paints, they have a shine to them. That's pretty much, most cases, that's pretty much no matter what, right? So, but basically, you can still do a matte varnish on them after. At least I do. I brush on the, the varnish, though, just so you know. I don't spray it. She is on crack. Shut up! But the matte effect thinner. Very useful stuff. There's also other thinners that there are. Uh, there's other thinners, I mean, such as quick dry thinner to speed up the process of the paint drying. Different brands, they take different amounts of time to dry. So some take a few days, some take a week, some, t some take even longer, 10 days or so. It depends on what kind of oil that the oil paint was made with because that has an effect. Thank you. Because that has an, an effect on how long it takes for that paint to dry. So keep that in mind. Thank you, Joel. So yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. So see how it kind of smooths it out a bit? Looks more, it's like, ooh, sotano. So yeah, it depends on what kind of oil it is. And there are different ways that you can quick dry the process of your oil paint. But to be completely honest with you, for me personally, I prefer just letting the paint do its thing. I let it take its time drying. The only thing it means is if I'm working on something for a competition, thank you, Anya, for sharing. I appreciate it. The only thing is, is that when it comes to painting for competition, it just means I can't sit there the night before and work on pressure painting, so to speak. So that's the only thing. What undercoat do you use with oils? I just do regular primer. So uh, so this particular bust, I primed it with, I'll show you right now. I actually have it in front of me. I, t I primed it with Steinol Res. It, that's made by Badger if you're not. What up, Anyway Designs? He streams. We know that. So we got to make sure to give Tim his shout out with his special photograph picture that I took of him with the cushy hat. <laughs> we love you. You're wonderful. And we got to give Show Enough Studios her shout out too. All right, sorry. So yeah, I used Steinol Res Primer in Light Flush. That's what I primed it in. I used regular primer before putting on the oils. He's like, I really am. You're so silly. So yeah, so that's the primer that I use. I just use regular primer. Sometimes I sit there and I put... Um, a coat of acrylic paint beforehand for what I, you know in case I want a certain undercoat to show and to speed things along so I do that sometimes but mostly because the Steinol Res primer comes in so many colors I could just use that and just so you guys know now I don't know if when I do something in chat here if it shows up for you guys on Facebook but we do have a Discount code for Badger in case you want to pick yourselves up some primer. If you use, uh, it's done, usaairbrushsupply.com, all one word. And then if you use the code Metalhead Minis, all one word, 
you get 10% off. Now the only time that doesn't work is when they have like a big, big sale because sometimes they'll do sales like 40% off and whatever. Then obviously the code's not going to work then. And besides, that sale will beat what, what the code's going to give you anyway. So if that's the case, definitely get in on a sale, you know. I'm making sure I don't miss any chats. I'm trying to get used to having to look at two screens now. Ah, it's trying to give me a heart attack. So yeah, I want to smooth this out and also so that the oil paint doesn't look like total high gloss when I'm done. But like I said, I could still matte varnish and when I do, I when I use matte varnish, I brush it on. I don't spray it on. Oh yeah, I remember what I was telling you guys. So there are different ways that people go about trying to speed up the process of drying. So you have your quick dry thinners that you can use. I don't have it. Uh, there are people that do other techniques, like put it in a uh, slow cooker uh, on, on, a, uh, on a low setting for a certain amount of time. Again, not, not something I really do um, because I just rather the paint just do its thing. Just take its time drying. If you, if you take a week to dry, you take a week to dry. Don't care. If you take like two weeks, I don't care. You know, I just, I just let you do your thing which I sure hope the paint appreciates that. So I'm taking some of this purple here, and you're going to see me looking back and forth at this reference art. I'm not going to copy it exactly. I'm just basically... It's going to look real rough at this point in time, so keep that in mind. So I'm putting the purple in the deep shaded areas. Put a little by the eye here. Gonna look real rough for a minute. You're gonna be like, I am worried about when she is smoking crack. What up, Joe? What up, Orchrist? Orchrist, how's everything going with it? You, you you got new appliances. Let's give Orchrist a hype. Congrats. He got new appliances for his new place. He's gonna have his new his new place in February. Just make sure it's in a place. That pet hair can't get to during those draw and try times. Personal experience. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that's why. That's one of the reasons too. Ollie is not allowed in this in the shop at all. Besides the fact that he messes around with the computer wires, he messes around with the computer wires and then like turns off speakers and everything else. And we're like, bro, what are you doing? He's he's nuts. Makes me want to do cooking streams. You can. You could sit there and do your painting one day and then be like, today is Thursday. We're going to do some cooking. Move over, Julia Child. But yeah, that's really exciting. You know, and, and that's when you know you're an adult too. When you sit there and you buy appliances and it's exciting to you. Or you buy a new vacuum and it's exciting to you. You're like, oh, I need a vacuum. Oh my God, my life is complete. Definitely got to make sure to get this party face. I swear, guys, I'm not smoking crack. This is this is part of the process. And we're gonna get some under here too, definitely. So if you want to mix colors in with the shade, you could do that too. So like, for example, you see here that I'm putting like this purple, right? But I can go back and put some blue too, some Prussian blue. See, I'm going in with that Prussian blue and kind of going over it. And it just, it looks a little rough right now. But then when you go through, when I go back through and do the blending, it'll make a lot more sense. So right now it just looks, it's like, oh my goodness, then why are you doing such funky stuff? I wish vacuums were taller. Yes. I know that would be so much better for you. But no, seriously, if you feel inspired to do cooking streams, why not? You totally should do it. That would be fun. Oh, people like cooking streams too. People like that stuff. 
put some more of that blue there. There we go. And the cool thing is about oil also is that if, let's say, I'm sitting here and I'm doing these colors, right? And let's just say, for argument's sake, or whatever, or that actually it could possibly even happen now, that I turn around, I put everything together, and I think it looks like crap. But it's still part of the process, right? I'm one of those eccentric artists. <laughs> I'm definitely not adult enough to enjoy a vacuum yet. Give it time. Give it time. So the cool thing about with oil is that if you don't like the way something comes out, you just go in and we could take an eyeshadow applicator and remove the paint. That is all you got to do. As a matter of fact, just in case we need it, let me grab one. And also, too, like after Christmas and stuff, there's going to be a lot of clearances happening because a lot of stores are going to try and clear out of inventory that didn't sell. And when you go, now you can go to the makeup. Now some of you guys can go to the makeup store and it doesn't have to be weird. And you can buy, you. that's when you want to buy your makeup sponges for your weathering. That's when you do, that's right, she does do some cooking streams. She does really cool stuff too. And you can get eyeshadow applicators. And I got these on sale. I think I got these for like a dollar or something. But that's what I use them for is my oil painting. And I buy them when they're on clearance and they're cheap. So I have a stock of them. So in case there's any mistakes, we could just take it off with the eyeshadow applicator. Yay! So that's that's a good thing. So we had some purple going on there and that. Okay, cool. And then we're doing some magenta up at the top. And we're going to end up doing... Thank you, Micah. We're going to end up doing the magenta up top here. How far back are we going to go? All the way to the back. And then we'll just go back like that. And I want it to kind of fade and go into other parts of it, so I'm just going to kind of do that. And I'm going to take some of that, and I'm going to take some white. This is palette paper, GW palette paper, by the way. This is what I use with my oil painting. If I'm here in the shop, that this is what I use. I use GW palette paper for my oil paints. Because it's just so easy. It lasts a couple of days, and then, like, when I don't want to use it, I just throw it out, and I don't have to worry about... There we go. Got some white on there. I do what I want. Should have seen the looks I was getting in Walmart looking at panties and bras without the girls. <laughs> yeah, people were like, hey, what you went to, bruh? <laughs> Went here to judge. Put some of that magenta here too, so that way it all ties together once I. They're like, what up, bro? Why are you looking at the panties? I mean, some people understand. They're like, oh, we must have daughters or something like that or whatever. But. Even so, now you have excuses to get makeup. It doesn't have to be weird. So when I do, now when I do some of that flesh, that'll come out. There'll be some of that pink undercoat going on. That'll look good because we want there to be some human flesh happening. So we're taking some of that lighter pink and just putting it here. I'm going to put some here, and it kind of looks like I'm dry brushing, but I'm, it's going to come out underneath. You'll see. You'll see. It's going to be really awesome. You're going to be like, oh, my God. Some of this, I'm just kind of winging it, too. I'm not going to lie, because I sat there and thought, I want to do an alien and like, not gray, not green. So we're just going to kind of see where this goes. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> Hell, I'll just prance my fabulous self in any time of year. No worries if it's weird. Blame on. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong. Cleaning up the brush right now. Getting ready to do the next part. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I'm gonna, let's take a look at this viridian hue. And the turquoise. Mm. 
Let me see what happens if I mix some Prussian blue in with it. Ooh, I like the way that looks. A little more Prussian blue. Yeah! You're going to look all Lisa Frank and whatnot. So this will be the primary skin color mostly. We're just going to kind of put that on. Here's another thing to know. Oil paint spreads. So if you sit there and you miss a little spot, you don't necessarily have to cover it because when you go through and do the blending part of the whole thing, it'll spread over to that small space that you missed, chances are, so don't worry about all that. This is going to be a... F oh, yeah, I see where you're going with this. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to weird places with this is what I'm thinking. This is going to be a, a funky-looking alien that's that's for sure <laughs> you're gonna look all funky and whatnot but we're gonna have a good time either way valandar the red thank you so much for the follow yeah let's yeah this alien's about to go to weird places but i know kirk Who's the owner of Collapse? I know he'll love it, though. He loves when I do stuff like this. Just sit there and... He likes when I just do what I want with, like, the paint and just kind of see where it goes. And, so, and I, I need to do more of that because it's it's more of a challenge, you know what I mean? To kind of see where I can make something go. It's good for you to do as an artist, for sure, you know? All right. So I'm going to take some of this color. I'm going to add some white. And add some white here. And you can always go over, like if you don't like the way something comes out, like, oh, that's not how I want it highlighted like that. You can always just go over. Again, like I said, too, you can just take the eyeshadow applicator and just go over it and just erase it and kind of start over. Trying to get more white. There we go. Get some on that shoulder there. There we go. Get some on the face there. Fifty years old. The duration of The Simpsons is the duration of my life as an adult. I thought The Simpsons turned thirty. Was it this week? Oh, thirty years since The Simpsons first premiered. My mind has gone kerpop. Thirty years ago yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you hear you hear. Sure enough, I'm almost forty. Must be nice. I already hit it. <laughs> Shoot, I party like it was 1999 though. No, I didn't. I sat there and I bought myself a bunch of cool stuff though. I was like, it's my birthday. I'm gonna buy myself a cool toy. I haven't done that part of whole wallowing in depression with 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 wine and you know whatever because I. <laughs> I'm busy recovering from surgery, so I've been on, like, I, I was on morphine and stuff. I'm off it now, but. All right. So I got some of that light. All right. Do a little more white. I'm going to put just white. Add the white. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. 
Dab, dab, dab. Just the white. See, I'm already doing all the layering, all the things. Dab, dab, dab. And make sure I got both the shoulders evenly, pretty much. There we go. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to add in. Now, there's going to be times, too, just so you know, that you're going to add certain colors and then you're not really going to need them like you thought you were. So, for example, I think that red is going to be that. You're turning 39 next month. You're so all. You're so young. He's like, I became an adult when The Simpsons premiered. Right? Thank you, boo. I love you, too. So, yeah, but there's going to be times, there's going to be certain colors that you might, you, you know, put on your palette that you're not going to end up using. So, yeah, in my case, I think that's going to be the warm red, but that that happens. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that. Now we're going to put some other friggin' randomness on here. Mmm. Just little touches of yellow. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to put flesh tone in here. And we're going to mix it with some of the magenta. See, there's a reason why there's that pink. So I'm going to take some of that, put it on the nose, put it on the mouth, on the cheeks. A little bit up here. What? A guy who grew up in the 80s, my mind exploded when I realized in a little over six months we'll be closer to that start of 2060 than will be the end of 1980. Oh, no. I know that's, it is a scary thought when you sit there and you think about that stuff. You're like, wait a minute. A little bit of flesh color here on the lips. And we're going to definitely put some in the highlighting. Over here. I know this is looking funky. Don't judge me. Don't judge me yet. <laughs> How about that? Have it where there's some flesh showing underneath. Hmm. Trying to see. I'm going to put some here on the belly. I want some on the belly. And I want some here. And here. Chest flesh. A little bit there. A little bit there. Gonna add some of the light flesh tone. Mix it in with the flesh shade, or I'm sorry, with the flesh tint. Add some of that light. Hey, Yan, how are you, sweetie? It's Jan Wine. Hi, sweetheart. There you are. If you're interested to dig up those books and say, "Yep, that happened." Nope, not that. Heck, we got better than that. Yeah, right. No kidding. How are you, Missy? Good. We're just, we're, we're trying something new. I, I enabled the multi-stream function on Twitch, so now people on Facebook can see us, too. Did you set yours up like that, too, Jan? 
<laughs> like, I see it, Jan, right? A little bit of that wool white with the, yeah. All right, like that, like that, a little bit on the tum tum, that, that, and then there, there. Oh, that's uneven. That's too much. I didn't want to put that much, just a touch. There we go. Okay. Now, you might see me do some adjusting as I go along, which is fine. Let me great get it some Viridian also. So yeah, so you're going to see it as we go along. There's going to be some parts where I'll probably be doing some adjustments to color. I might go over a certain area again, stuff like that. That's also part of the process. But all in all, you're going to see a model get painted relatively quickly with oils. I'm trying to get some more shade here. I'm going to do some just the Viridian. I'm doing just Viridian hue right now. The Viridian hue is pretty sheer. It's not, it's not thick at all, which makes it serve really well to color filter over the turquoise and stuff for a more of a shade. So it's really good in that regard. And get some under that chin too. There we go. You see how it looks funky? I set it up. Don't think you're supposed to stream to two different platforms at the same time. Well, they're the ones that enabled it, so I don't know what to tell you. Thank you. Yeah, they they enabled it. It's through Streamlabs OBS. And also, they, yeah, they posted a thing, so that way, I guess, uh, they give you rewards for it now, too. Then you're winning. I hope so. I mean, if they, I'm sure if there's a problem, they'll send me an email and let me know. They have no problem doing that, right? That's part of the partnership program, not affiliates or normal streamers. Oh, actually, yeah, they sent me an email saying that they wanted affiliates to do it. I'm not a partner. I ain't that good. Shoot. <laughs> All right, just Viridian Hue over here. Put some over here. All right, people, now it's time for the, it's almost time for the moment of truth. All right, guys, here we go. Pray for me. <laughs> Partners of Twitch are Partners of Twitch are barred from streaming to YouTube or Facebook. Really? So, okay, so with the partners, so if, so like once I become partner, we wouldn't be able to do that. We would have to separate the two, I guess. Hold on, I want some coffee. Let's take a picture of this. This looks funky as hell, right? Because you look at this, you're like, bro, what are you doing? You're like, oh my God, Lynn, you're ruining things. There we go. Moment of truth, my friends. This is happening right now. Cat361, the colors are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And welcome. They can stream to other platforms, but not at the same time. And VODs need 24 hours cooldown before being uploaded to YouTube or separate videos completely. That's, I don't know. That's just, I don't know. That's freaking weird. Okay. Not saying you're being, you know what I mean. I'm not talking about you. You know I love you. Okay. So I got my paper towel on the side because there might be a point in time where I'm going to need it. Got the Filbert brush going on. Let me take, put this out of the way, you know, in case of fire or flood kind of deal, okay? So I take that filbert and I use it to start. Daddy Boo, at your service. Hey, she like the boop is happening. 
Well, not yet on the not yet on the eyes, but we'll get there. Okay. So I'm using the filbert and I'm gonna hold the model this way. And I'm kind of just tapping on the areas and manipulating the paint to move around to where I want it to go. And you're gonna see it's gonna start cleaning up. Like it's gonna start looking like I took the paints and one blends into the other and you're going to be like, oh my God, Lynn's not such a weirdo after all. You'd be like, because I was about to Facebook message all my friends and be like, yo, Lynn's messing shit up. Y'all need to see this. <laughs> and so what's going to happen is there's going to be, you know, I might see adjustments where I can blend stuff in more, then maybe there needs to be more highlights somewhere, more shading somewhere. And my cat's crying right outside the room right now because he can't see me. So I'm going to show you so far where we're at so you can see And this is for my own collection. This is not a commission, but Kirk does use photos of my stuff for, for advertisements and things like that. So for advertisements for Collapse Industries and things like that, or you might end up seeing it on a display at his booth or something. So, so I'm going to show you in a second here. I just want to make sure I'm far up enough in it so that when you see it, you're like, oh, okay, I see what you did. So it doesn't look all screwy. All right. So let me, let's take a look at the bottom. Hey, Savage Shark. Good. How are you, sweetie? Turn on the black light, right? You should. But look here, take a look at this. And you can see on the chest part there that it's getting blended. And you see how I put a bunch of different colors, but once you blend them together, it makes it look like there is more depth and de depth. I can't talk today. Depth and dimension going on. There's an interesting color set up here. Yes, I make things all funky. <laughs> and then you have Anyway Designs that spells it New York style for you. So that way, if you don't know. If you don't know how to spell it New York style, just, just, ask, just ask Anyway Designs. He'll tell you. Because apparently he spells everything in my accent. And then I'm even going in the shade area there and kind of blending all that up. And the only reason why you see me clean up the brush is to take off any excess paint to keep everything basically where it's supposed to be. But I do a little bit of pushing around with the color and I'm like, hey, go over here, you go over there. I deploy you to go over there, and that's just kind of what I do. That's just how we roll up in here. Get in the shade part there, try and fix that up. Blend in that shadow. And if I miss any of your chats, forgive me. I'm not, I'm not ignoring you, I promise. If I have to, I'll go back and look if it's on Facebook, and then I'll just answer it after. But this is what I do. Take that filbert brush and just blend it all in. Make those colors blend. You see that there's that blue and that pink, and at first it looked all separate and stuff. No more. All I know about New York City, I learned from reading Marvel comics as a kid. Yes. Oh no, I demand chat attention from like a cat. You're hysterical. Anders Armand, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you, thank you. But here, let's take a look at where we're at. Do you guys see the difference? 
I know the, com the, the camera's trying to like not behave. There we go, see? I do not ignore, you shut your face. I talk to you like multiple times a day. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes the camera likes to act sassy and be like, oh, you want to show people stuff? No, that's okay. And then I'm like, but it's important. And the camera's like, well, that's nice. I don't care. The camera acts like a cat, too. <laughs> you sit there and you manipulate the paint. Move it around. Just be like, hey, I want you to go over here, and you're going to add to the flesh color over here and then oh look there's some extra flesh color there and I move that around to up there and you just kind of just kind of do that for a while this to me to be honest is is the one of the fun parts of doing oil painting too and this is one of the reasons why I love doing it so much is because I start off slapping around paint like I'm crazy and then I take this brush that cost me maybe 70 cents and just spread colors around and kind of see what they do and where do they go and just let some stuff do its thing and it's easy to adjust if you don't like the way something looks you can easily fix it and it's not a big deal and I'm starting from the bottom and working my way up I don't do that all the time sometimes I do whatever depending on what I'm working on but in this case, I figured to make it easier for you guys to understand, I figure if I start at the bottom and work my way up, it'll help you see the progression better. There we go. And I, you see, I go back, I adjust as I go along. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't like the way that kind of blended. So I'm going to go back over and manipulate it to go a different direction. And, you know, you can do that. That's all right. It's cool. No, James uses oils hand extracted from avocados from the Caribbean. <laughs> uh, yeah, that Jim Jim and I you know sat and painted to get he yeah, he totally launched me not be he got me over the hurdle of doing this on figures. I used to paint oil paints when I was little. Thank you Ruliano for the like. We appreciate you. But yeah, no, I, I uh, used oils when I was little, right? So one day, Jim and I won Adepticon like years, a few years ago, maybe it was, or four years ago. God, it's a, the time goes by really fast. So anyways, years ago, yes, yeah, so we sat together. I don't want to say it was a few years ago. And I sat there and I said to him, you know, I've been thinking... Uh, like the historical guys do, I've been wanting to do oil paints on figures, but I'm kind of afraid I'm going to screw it up. So he said to me, well, I just started doing oils on figures too. And he also did oil on canvas and stuff, you know, and he sat there and he goes, hey, you know, I'll go over some stuff with you if you want and we can do it together. And I said, oh, that sounds wonderful, right? So we sat together one night. And he went over with me some basics that he picked up doing them on figures and all this fun stuff. And yeah, and I was just that after that night, man, I was just rocking and rolling on it. And I, I have more fun doing oils on figures than acrylics for sure. Like I like doing heavy body acrylics on some stuff too, but oils, pfft, Dude, seriously, like I do it, I, I've been trying to practice more and learn and pick up more stuff with it too. I'm even studying right now making oil paints. So I've been doing that. So eventually I'll be doing a teaching about that too. And yeah, I'm all about it. And when I want to do anything like add liners or anything, for example, all right, let me show you something real quick. I wanted to add acrylic liners and stuff afterwards to this. I know, right? No, I've been doing Adepticon for years, Viking. What patented how? Yeah. So I did this in oils. 
the eye is acrylic, right? But I did the, the, the horn and the horns and everything. This is all oils, right? And I, excuse me, I wanted to add in some liners to it and stuff. So what I did was I gave it about four days to dry to where I can dry it to the touch. Now keep in mind with oil paints, when you touch it and it's dry to the touch, that doesn't mean it's dry all the way through because especially if you're doing like I'm doing, there's going to be layers underneath, right? So there's going to be some layers underneath that'll still be drying. So you got to make sure to definitely keep that in mind, guys, okay? So I, but I make sure I, it's dry to the touch before I add any acrylics to it. Oh, yes, that's right, at my first Adepticon. Right, okay, I see what you're saying. Sorry, I was like, I thought maybe you just forgot, because there's so many conventions, I don't know how anybody keeps up with it, you know? So basically, I wait a few days, and then any kind of acrylics I want to add. Liners, uh, if I have to, add, if I want to add a wash for some reason, pigment powders and stuff, I wait until, I wait a few days, about three or four days. Sometimes even a week, it depends. But I have so much work always lined up that it's not really... A problem for me to just put it aside in our in progress one of our in progress shelves and then you know go back to it later and stuff like that so no problem savage thanks for hanging with us man but yeah you see here I added liners at the top to accentuate the ridges on for the ridges in the face I added dark blue indigo ink and some around the eyes so that you can see it better. So yeah, that's what I did. So when you want to add acrylics, you just got to wait a bit and then you can add your inks, your washes, your pigment powders, everything else. Mm. All right. Back to filberting. Thuds his head on a table two hours before he could take his bases off the printer. That's not bad, especially if it's when it comes to 3D printing. That two hours will go by before you know it. All right. So basically, when I'm taking the excess off the brush, it's kind of like the same that you would do with dry brushing. You know, just touch on it gently and take the excess off the brush so that way it all blends together the way it's supposed to. Yeah, see? So I'm manipulating the paint to go out that way. So that way it ties in with the viridian hue that I put over the turquoise color. And you can still see the turquoise underneath. It doesn't affect that in any way. Okay, I see an opportunity for adjustment. This is with the magenta, by the way. Add some white. There we go. And then just the magenta. See, see, see some of that as you go along. You're just like, oh, that little spot there. There we go. Hey, Erica. Thank you, baby, for the liking. Thank you for the like, sweetie. Love you. All right. There. So an opportunity to fix, and I took it. I just came strolling in like the Kool-Aid man. There we go. Go in. Kind of dabbing. Just dabbing it on there to blend those colors together and then wiping off the excess so it all comes together the way it's supposed to. 
There we go. Kind of pulling that pain. Yeah, let's all let's all join in. Let's have a party. But yeah, that whole thing of hanging out with Jim and then we went over together about oil painting on figures and stuff like that. That was like one of the biggest, that was like one of the biggest aha moments for me as a figure painter. And I, that was one of the times that I was the absolute most inspired where I was like, I want to do all the things. <laughs> was that, and when Seth Amsden sat with me and was showing me all kinds of cool stuff that you can do with terrain. Let me tell you something. If you want to learn how to do terrain with somebody, that's the man you want to sit with. That man does all kinds of funky stuff and it turns into just absolute greatness. That's what Seth does. And, and on my, fir my first LVO, he sat with me and he was just like, yeah, and then you do this. And then you take water in a big Tupperware and just do all this. And I'm just like, oh. <gasps> <laughs> so it's tank for astronauts and sunny d's for wannabes is kool-aid for us normal assholes yes that's right <laughs> i told mr shy a little while ago a resin printer has a hidden hazard your backlog of unpainted minis will grow exponentially oh you ain't kidding yep i know yeah purple drink there's a song about purple drink isn't there Flavor Aid, Kool Aid was Timothy Leary. Yep, that's, I, I think you're right. Yeah. Flavor Aid. Oh my goodness, that just really took me back. I remember Flavor Aid used to be in the store where you went to get all the Wick stuff and everything, right? In New York, anyway. With the quarter drinks in the little, in the little uh, bucket looking thing, you know? Sorry, I was just reading messages that come to me. Just in case, if one of the kids message, I got to sit there and, especially this time of year, lots is always going on. All right, so I'm taking some of that pink. Hey, pink, come on over here. Let's have a party here at the edge. Everybody who's anybody's up in here. There we go. Spread around some of that yellow. Take some of that shade, manipulate it, and be like, hey, come down this way. Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. Yeah, so if you've never done oils on a figure yet, I do encourage that you try it. Thank you, Rick. I do encourage that you try it and you don't have to get expensive oils like what I got. Like you have to remember, I've been doing oils on figures for a while now. So I sit there and now I, yes, I have upgraded my, all of my oils, but when I started out doing it and I passed this down, I passed down my oils to another artist that wanted to get started in doing them. I bought my first set of oils at Hobby Lobby and the full price of them, I believe if I remember right, was something like 12 bucks, but then you can get a 40% off coupon and then it's way cheaper. So you can totally, here's the back. It's a purple drink, three, six mafia. <laughs> we are from Memphis. Oh, that's great. That's great. That really took me back though, seriously. But yeah, the first set of oils that I bought when I sat with Jim was a set of oils. I think it came with like 16 colors and it was $12.99 original price. And then I used my handy dandy 40% off coupon. So it was even cheaper. And you can just start off on that with oils. And I've done figures using those oils, and it came out just fine. So you do not have to sit there and be like, oh, well, if I want to try out oils, that's gonna, I better play lotto if I wanna, if I wanna sit there and mess around with those. No, you don't, you don't have to do that. I sat there and purposely upgraded my set because of how much I got into it. And that way, if I sat there and found that 
painting oil on figures was not my thing, then it I didn't sit there and like have to dig in my kid's college fund in order to, you know, buy, you know, buying paint. You know what I mean? So you can get a cheap set of oils and it will still do the job. But you want to get like artist grade. You want to get artist grade so that way they come out, you know, relatively nice on, on the figures. But again, like I said, it's a, it's a cheap set. You can get a cheap set, 12 bucks. That's it. Or actually cheaper than that because you'd get 40% off. So it's like nine, you know, like eight or nine bucks or something. And you get like 12 to 16 oil colors. You, you can't, you can't beat that. That's easy. That's easy to do, to try something new. And then if you find that you enjoy it as much as I do, then by all means, get the other oil paints. Like I said, I love Abtalong 502. Their oil paints are freaking amazing. And I have Windsor Newton oil paints, as you saw, and Grumbacher. I like Grumbacher too. I love going, yes, Jerry's Artorama is like, yeah. I avoid Hobby Lobby. I prefer my brushes and like with the little less religious artifacts smuggling. <laughs> well, there's Michael's. Michael sells basically, uh, basically the same stuff, you know. But yeah, what, what uh, Anyways Designs is talking about, Jerry's Artorama, we love that store. That store is like... That's like an amazing store. So you see all the blending, how it's coming together? Between brushes, paints, thinner, really you can get going for 20 to $30. Yeah, for oil paints, absolutely. Absolutely. Spotted Painter, hey, while we're here, share the link to your Facebook page, please, on the chat so that when people can, on the Facebook stream or, you know, just whatever, so that way people can follow you. All right, so we're going to do the top of the head. It's going to make it easier probably for you guys to see if I do it this way, I'm thinking. Yeah, thank you for that, dude. All right, so we're going to sit there and we're going to blend this together. What I'm doing is I'm blending the magenta now. So there's regular magenta, magenta mixed with white. There's some viridian hue in here, white. And now I'm trying to get that to all mix together. And I'm manipulating the paint and I am pushing it around with the filbert. You guys see this okay? Let me do this. Yeah, guys, give Spotted Painter a like there on Facebook, okay? I'm trying to move the camera so you can see this better. Okay, cool. And then if you end up pulling too much paint away, you can always put it back. And then it's 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 just so, so easy. So easy. And, and I'll tell you the truth, too. Doing oil painting on figures, especially larger ones, for most, it's so relaxing. Like, seriously, the, this is so relaxing to me to do this for you guys. Showing you this and... Doing the oil painting, it's so, yeah. This is my jam right here. And more and more people are knowing about it. And hopefully this is helping you guys get over the hurdle if you've been thinking about doing oils on figures. I, I sincerely hope this gets you over the hurdle of trying it out. At least that's my objective by doing this for you guys. And besides the fact that I've been looking, I've been staring at this bust and thinking, I need to paint this bust because I know this bust is going to be so fun to paint. Pull that down, pull some of that paint down there. Oh, Spotted Painter's on with us, yay! Uh, do you stream on Twitch too? Nope, nope, I thought the whole time you were doing that through Facebook, I'm so sorry. Yeah, but share your Twitch, too. Sorry. Jesus, I feel stupid. I sat there the whole time thinking you were doing that through Facebook chat. Silly me. All right, so I see there's a little more pink highlighting happening. 
on one side than the other. So, opportunity to fix. Hold on. So that way it's even. So you see? Oh, my book with the 1500 mix recipes is coming today. So excited. The landscape one came yesterday. Yesterday or the day before yesterday? I think it was the day before yesterday, actually. There we go. Pull some of this purple down this way. Pull some of it down this way. And that's what I like about the filbert too. You just turn it on its side, and when you want to manipulate paint to go to a certain area like this, like where there's just a crease and you don't want to cover too much, you just take the side of it and just go boop and pull and pull and pull. That's that. Bam skis. <laughs> I'm excited about this. I want more on the face though. I'm gonna do more tweaking on the face though. Look at this. Oh, you were. Okay. I was like, are I crazy or what? See? What do you think? Thank you. Yeah. So now we're going to do some tweaking. Areas of opportunity to do some tweaking. Hold on. Let's clean this brush with our odorless turpentine which you can also get and use a 40% coupon on. And I'm really making sure to take the as much wetness as I can off this. Pops of yellow work well. Thank you. Don't do meth. Drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm making sure to get as much of that wetness off as possible. Good, got that. All right, let's do some tweaking. So this is the part in the process where I do some tweaking. So here's where I'd like to do tweaking. Let's talk about this. I'm going to use the smaller brush for this. This is just where I do little pots, okay? And I'm going to do, I want more on the face. There's two things I want, actually. I think I want to highlight a little more on top of the head. So I'm going to do that. I want to do, I want to do some adjustments to the shading here. I love the way the blue's looking, but I want to, I think I want a little more Viridian hue. So we're going to do that. Excuse me. And I like the way that the yellow pops are, are working in there too, Spotted Painter. I agree with you on that. So let me start with putting in some Viridian Hue in some areas. So that way it's not all full. Because I feel like I like the blue, but I want there to be, a, I want to soften that up just a touch. And I'm feeling like the only way I'll be able to do that is by adding in some Viridian Hue. And I'm just putting just a little. That's why you see me taking off some of that excess. And I'm just going to soften this up. See that? Just in the spots where I need it. Just in the spots where I need it. See that? Little birdie and hue under here. Yeah, going to do that. Going to put a touch under the lip there to accentuate the fact that there's, you know, the pursing of that lips going on there. Okay. Let's put some Viridian Hue in here too. A little more here. I had some here to begin with, but just a touch. And since the light hits more over here, I'm going to put some more over here. Yeah, I like the way that's looking. I'm going to put some here and put some here. Nessie's on! You hurry up. What's going on, Nessie? Make sure, let's all make sure to give Nessie a follow. He's one of Metalhead Mini's own as well. Sneaking some twitch time while at work. Ah! I find that with oils that I often need to go back and add more highlights after the first smooth like you did. The smoothing reduces the contrast. That's true too. So yeah, so like I said, you know, there's, there's adjustment that you go through and you do and whatever, but it is not a big deal at all. Put some Brody and Hue here. Yeah, because I'll notice, I'll go through and I'll be like, oh, here's an area of opportunity to, you know, soften this up a little. 
And I'm going to put viridian hue a little bit over here too because it seems to, the, I want to fix the gradient a little. I want there to be like blue to, a, to like a green teal to the yellow. So I want to kind of do that little here in this part here. Yeah. And you'll see why I'm doing that in just a second. So that viridian hue, we're going to put a little more viridian hue over here too. Smooth out that gradient. Yeah, that'll work. So I like the way that's looking. Hold on, let me clean up the brush real quick. Oh, I got some other oil paints on here too. I'm going to have to use another part of the paper towel for that part. I got a little more yellow. And I'm going to put a little more of the pop of yellow there on the lips because I really like the way that was looking. And over here and over here. Little touches of the yellow we're going to do. I'm going to put a little more here because the light hits more here. So we're going to put a little bit more, little bit more there. Yeah, that looks good. And we're going to put some over the eyes a little bit because when we do the whole black onyx thing with the eyes, It'll stand out better if there's a light contrasting color to help it stand out. I'm going to put a little bit on the highest part of the cheekbone too. And there's going to be more flesh tone, but you're going to see that there's some yellow in it. And you're going to really have to look at it to find it, but you're going to, you're going to see it. Especially those of you who are already well versed in this kind of thing. And well versed in colors and what you're looking at. Oh, I just dropped a brush. Hold on. I am causing destruction. Okay. All right. Flesh with the light flesh. And that's the sound of more kids' Christmas gifts coming to the house. I just, I, I, I feel that, wait, or is that, what's today? Wednesday. Ah, no, it's garbage. Never mind. But there is more Christmas stuff coming. There we go. Put more flesh tone there. Because I wanted a little more oomph going on here. So we're going to do a little more. And on the chin. And up here. Definitely got to accentuate those parts of the bones there. Now there's a little bit of a touch right there in the center. But as you saw me do with the filbert brush, I can push that paint around. Put a little more on the side, a little more on the side. Right? And I want there to be a little more going on over here. So I'm going to put some there. And put a little bit here. A little more here, a little more there. Even that out there because there's a little more highlight going on, on that side than that side. So we're going to fix that. Hmm, I'm going to put a touch there, a touch there. Here we go. A little more white up at the top we're going to do. I might have added a thin line of dark purple to it. What? I like to shade to add contrast rather than highlight. Push the color dog to make the highlights appear brighter. Oh, yeah. You can do that, too. You got to do what works for you. And I'm doing just white. Because you're going to see when I put the paint, when I put the filbert brush, it's going to even out. It's going to blend in with the pink. It's going to automatically mix. Okay? And I'm going to do just white over here. Just white here. Oh, am I out? Of, I'm sorry. I was trying to make sure I could see what I was doing. Sorry about that. You're like, what? where are you putting white on, Lynn? What are you doing? Yeah, Lynn, you're smoking crack and taking everything away from the camera again. No, I'm just white there. Hmm. All right. Now I'm going to put... Touch 
a touch of the magenta. You got to make sure not to touch the model itself too, because remember it's oil, so it's going to be wet. It's not like acrylic, because with acrylic you see some people sit there and they touch. You know, they'll put their thumb or their pinky or something to anchor their hand. But no, no, you cannot do that, my friends. You have to make sure not to touch the model. Hmm. some of that Prussian blue, see if I can line those lips a little. No, it doesn't have a fine point, so this isn't going to, hold on. Do I have, yes I do, hold on. Now when I want to sit there and do lines with the oils, I have this handy dandy cheapy brush that was passed down to me. Whatever I do what I want, I run with five gangs. Yo ass don't run with no five gangs! Warlord US just posted the most amazing mini article on realistic bricks. It's on my wall. Share it. Share it in the Metalhead Minis group too, dude. So I'm going to do some Prussian blue to line the lips there. I'm going to do some, try to do some lining here. And it's a little spread, but you can sit there and see when I blend it, it'll all come together there. There we go. Just a little bit of the blue. That's right. Tease like I do what I want. I run with five gangs. Shut your face. <laughs> all right. Now we're going to go back in with the filbert brush. Take it out. Take the paint. Put it aside in case of fire or flood. Sip some coffee. That's important. Got my Bustello hustle going on. All right, now I'm taking that filbert brush and I'm going into the high, more high highlighting areas there. And it automatically, keep this in mind, guys, it automatically mixes in with the colors that are, the layers of color that are underneath. So you'll see that it'll highlight up a little more, but don't forget, it's going to mix in with whatever else you got going on. And you see how I softened that up a little bit? It made a little bit of a difference. That's, that's what I wanted. A little bit of a difference goes a long way. Turn this brush around like that. There we go. Turn it to the side. Oh, Spotted Painter, you're leaving us? I'm out. Got to go pretend to do work. Oh, bye, hon. Thank you so much. I was blown away. So simple, not expensive, but damn, what an effect. I'll bet. Yeah, doing bricks is fun, too. There you go. Now I'm taking that filbert brush, and you see I'm just moving it around here on the plinth and just kind of, yeah, buddy. Soften up that shade there with the viridian hue, blend that together. Yeah, buddy, that's the way I wanted it to look. That's right. There we go. Got that to fix up there. I'm going to do an adjustment. I see an area of opportunity to adjust right there under this part of the face. You'll see that in a minute. What I think I'm going to do there is I'm going to add some magenta.
There we go. Oh, there was a hair. There we go. Now I'm taking that filbert brush, continuing to blend that. Yeah, buddy. Even that out a bit because I see it's brighter on one side than the other. It's kind of not what I wanted to do. There we go. But it made a little bit of a difference. A little more highlighting happening there. Get some on the tummy there. There we go. Thank you, Ron. We're glad you're here. There we go. Hey, do me a favor. Anyway Designs, I know you're probably still on. Can you share this stream onto the Metalhead Minis Hobby Group, too, so that way other people can, you know, whoever's not following the page and just follows the tutorial stuff can still see and watch later if they want so they can learn some stuff if they want. So I'm going back in here with the filbert brush, kind of pushing that paint around. It's like, what you doing, Lynn? Just pushing around some paint. NBD. No big deal. Just being a paint pushing fool. There we go. Yeah, buddy. I like the way I put in that Viridian hue and it's softened up that blue it doesn't look like straight blue it shows some depth dimension a little bit of the you know some green in there that looks good some on the face there fix that that's right you should be hosting it would go to my stream and the any that's right you should do that High kilted Viking hides behind the wall. Why you gotta be so rude? Ooh. Now, are you saying why you gotta be so rude or are you singing it? We're like, Nessie, why you gotta be so rude? Let's get that highlighting going. It's gonna be lit up in here with these highlightings. Oh, yeah. If he gets up, right. we'll all get up. It'll be anarchy. Thank you, Anyway Designs, for the host. So now we're doing that highlighting that pops a yellow above the eye there. And that looks like that's working out just good. There we go. Taking that viridian hue and blending it in better with the yellow on these on the ear sides, which I guess this would be his ears. I don't know if that's his ears. I don't know if he has ears. I think he has ears. I hope so, because then I don't know how he hears anybody. It's hard to hear people when you when you do mental telepathy or whatever, right? I imagine that's how he communicates his mental telepathy. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to take off that from the inside of the eye because I'm going to see if I can paint the inside of the eye. I might have to wait a couple of days to do it. But some stuff, if I can get away with doing it right away, I will, you know. Which would be a great learning opportunity for you guys, right? So might as well do it all up in one thing. Take some of that yellow, spread it around a little more. There we go, get that. There we go, a little more highlighting happening. There we go. All right, I gotta be careful on this part here because I wanna make sure this comes out just right. Okay. 
There we go. We got some of that gone. There we go. The highlighting happening. Trying to even it out some. That's right. Got to run duty calls. Have fun. Be good. Be good or be good at it. Now we're going to take that white, and you see it's mixing with the pink, with the magenta, as the case may be. If he gets up, right. we'll all get up. Thank Give you, Nessie, energy. for the host. There we go. And you see how it's mixing in with the magenta? That's why you could sit there and put just white. And what it'll do is it just brightens up the color, but the other colors still, you know, mix in and stuff, so it's not like... Which means you'd have to keep doing back and forth until it gets highlighted up as vivid as you'd like in some cases, but... At least you know it's not going to be like a stark... It's also not going to be a stark contrast of white and, you know, whatever, you know? This works, my friends. Take the side of that brush and just pull over here, pull over here. Computer, you're not being very friendly right now. You don't sit there and say, hey, remind me in four hours, and then you remind me ten minutes later. Like, that's just, that's not four hours. You have no concept of time, Mr. Computer. Okay. It's like, hey, can I... Can I update everything now? It's like, bro, no, calm down. <laughs> you know? Let me see here. I feel like we're getting there with the face, but I, I want to do a little more tweaking, if I may. And I want to even out some stuff here. So I'm seeing some areas of opportunity to tweak a little more, and that's what we're going to do. So areas of opportunity that I'm looking at is I see that there's more viridian hue on this side than on this side, so I'm going to even that out. So as you can see, I'm able to layer on top of colors, and it doesn't mess anything up. It doesn't mess anything up. It just basically builds on top of whatever you were doing. Oh, I forgot to do the blending on this side, but that's okay. So I'm going to add more anyway. Um, so more Viridian. So I did that. I'm trying to make sure the rest of that part's even. I'm going to do a little more Viridian over here. That looks good. I'm trying to see where else. I want more on the face. And I'm going to put more magenta also in the shading under here. So this was another area of opportunity that I saw. Hello, Robosh. How are you? So I'm going to put some magenta here. I'm going to put a touch here of magenta, there, and there. That'll work. Clean that up. And I'm going to put a little more on the face. I'm going to put more flesh tone on the face is what I'm going to do. because I want there to be more attention on the face there. 
the idea the face needs to be the focal point right so that's why we're gonna make sure that there's more craziness going on on this face There we go. I'm going to see what happens when I mix it together with the face like that. Make sure this is pretty relatively dry. Yes, it is. Or, you know, it's okay if it's a little damp, but you just don't want it to be. So I'm taking the filbert to blend all that in. Because I want the face to stand out more. I feel like there's not enough oomph happening in the face, and that's that's what I'm working on right now. I like the way the pops of yellow are on the face. I'm going to keep that the way it is. I like the way that looks. There's a tiny bit of viridian hue I got to blend in. There we go. Yeah, so I'm going to leave the pops of yellow the way it is. There we go. Man, I keep getting those, uh, not like those uh, telemarketing calls. It's like, Jesus, they just keep, they just keep coming at you. They don't care if you block them or what. They sit there, you block them, they find another number to call you on. There we go. Put a little more flush tone there. And then I'm going to blend it up a little bit. Blend it up into the turquoise there. And it looks like it's perfectly blended in there. Now, just so you know, we are in the process of writing a class for this, too, which Blackheart Models said that they would be more than happy to sponsor, you know, be, will be, you know, sit there and put in bus for you guys to get with the, you know, the class and stuff. And I'm pretty sure Collapse Industries would be all about that, too. I just haven't had a chance to chat with him about it because he's been traveling and you know family stuff and everything so I've been leaving him alone to do his stuff so this is where we're at right now trying to add more focus to the face there so now I'm going to blend in the magenta like I wanted to on the cheek there is an area of opportunity that I saw that there could be more contrast is in the cheek there and also I'm doing this to add more contrast to the face in general There we go. Trying to spread this around, spread it, blend this a little better over here, the magenta. And then I put viridian hue in some areas to blend. Put it there and over there. Right now I'm just double checking because I missed areas last time, so I'm just trying to, there we go. I forgot to do back here. That's what it was. I was like, I knew I forgot some spot. This was it. Spray around that viridian hue to add a little more shading from under the head there because obviously the bulbousness of that head would add a little more shadowing in the back. So that's what we are fixing.
Oh yeah, I like the way this is coming out with adding more flesh to the face there. Ho 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 ho, this little girl. I like this. I'm I'm getting really happy with this. I'm sorry if I'm being all like corny and whatnot. <laughs> I'm like, Hmm. And so this is a plinth here, just so you know, ash wood that's coated in black, and there's tape over it, so that way when I do the paint and stuff, it won't get all over the plinth. So just so you understand why it looks all weird and there's tape and craziness, that's that's the reason why. Fix under there. That looks pretty. That looks pretty damn good. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to add a little more white just to the face is what I'm going to do to add highlighting to the face. And this white has some a little tiny touch of magenta in it too. And I'm kind of just dabbing it in. Get a little more here. Definitely want to accentuate those eyebrows. A little white here there. A little on the chin. A little more white. I'm going to do it there. And then there and there. A little more white. The cheekbone area there. Put some up on the lip there. Just trying to make sure to. Sure I'm getting all the, the spots there. There we go. Get some excess off the brush there before I put this on. Now, I could always go back in later with an acrylic, like I said, just after a few days of letting it dry. And I can go back in with acrylic liners and stuff like that just to kind of tweak in those areas that need a little more, a little more, you know, depth and detail and stuff like that. So that can always be done. Gotta run. Thank you, show enough. And you gotta run. Time to walk the dogs. It's always great watching you paint. Happy holidays. Bye, Red Dragon. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us, by the way. Yeah, when that guy starts streaming, you guys all better watch him, too, because he's, seriously, he's, when it comes to, like, on scale models, just in general, airbrushing and stuff, that dude's super talented. He's one of those, like, unsung heroes, you know, like, people don't really talk about his ass. I don't know why. He, he sh his, his work should be, like, all over the place a lot more than it is. Yeah. So we got to wait to add inks and stuff like that for around the eyes, but And the cool thing is is that I could sit there, go out, run errands, come back. And then if I sit there and think about a blend that I didn't like the way it looked or something, I could just go in and go back and fix it. And it's not even a big deal. You can go back in and be like, oh, you know, I've been thinking about it. and I want to change this part up. And you can because it'll still be wet. Like after a week or something, probably not so much. But like if you go back same day, next day, whatever, then it'll still be wet and you could still
do the blends and fix a blend or take a part of it off and start over, you know, whatever. If you didn't like the way something looked, you can totally do that with oils, and that's another great thing about it. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. Now, I will be going back in with some ink and some, and you know, do some light lining in certain parts of the face, so I will be doing that. And with the oil paints also, I'm looking at it, you can see the texture in the skin. Further, I'm gonna further fix that real quick with some magenta. With some purple. There we go. And I'm going to take that paint with the filbert brush and I'm just going to pull the paint so that way it's blended with the highlight colors there. And I'm just trying to add a little more shading. Take some of that excess off there. Just so it's not light all throughout, that way there's some dark and since it's pulling towards the bottom of the head. Oh, I see what I did there. I'm like, wait, am I wiping off paint? I kind of am. So I just dab a little on, put it back. Gotta take some more of that moisture off. Like an orchid alien hybrid. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know what he is. He, I just know that I wanted to take these colors on an alien and just kind of see where it goes. And I think it went to weird places, but at the end of the day, it went to a good place. I think it definitely went to a fun place. A fun place that not too many people do, which is also what I like about this piece is that, not that I've seen, I haven't seen anybody sit there and do an alien like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the Steinal Res Black with some matte sealer and I'm going to do the back part and I'm going to get ready to paint the eyes black also. I'm going to see if we can get in and do that real quick because I have some black left over from yesterday. Oh, and I just went over that whole part of the palette. Oh well. Thank goodness the power cam doesn't work because uh, the water just went all over the place. <laughs> so it's not going to hurt nothing. All right, so I'm going to take one of my regular acrylic brushes. Here's another thing to know. Don't mix your... Me personally, I don't like to mix my acrylic and oil brushes together. Like, at all. This is Reaper Master Series Black. Pure black. Because I want to see how these eyes contrast with the skin and make sure it looks good too. I want to know now. I'm trying to make sure not to touch the oil paint areas. But yeah, I don't use my same brushes for acrylics that I do for oils. Oh, I'm liking this. Thank you, Tim. Now 
there we go. So we got one onyx eye done. Well, it's not done, but you know what I mean, base, base coated. And I'm trying to get this other one base coated so that way we can see how it looks with the skin. And the cool thing is, is that either way, I base all my eyes with black anyway. You know, when I'm getting ready to do color and stuff. So if it ends up the black doesn't work, I can still make this the base for another color. So that works out. But what I wanted to do is black. I wanted to keep the eyes relatively simple. Gotta get the inside of the eye more. Hold on. There we go. Let me make sure I got every part of the eye. Gotta get out the top some. Got to get the inside the tear duct there. There we go. See, what do you think? Now, now you see, you should see rather, sorry, I've just, sorry, I'm looking at the brush and making sure I did okay with it. Now you see here the black, how it makes the skin stand out more by the eyes now. At first it looked kind of flat. Then you put the onyx eyes. No, it's kind of hard. Gil has mad skill with an airbrush. Thank you. Yeah, he does. And thank you for com for uh, complimenting the alien. So what's been going on with you, Rizdom? Talk to us. How are you? Now, Rizdom Design has a YouTube channel, just so that you guys know. But I'm going to sit there and put here. That's his Twitch right there. But yeah, we did the onyx eyes, so that works out. Now I want to do. All right, that's from that blues from last night. Okay, cool. So that's fine. I can sit there and still do the Steinal Res black. So when I sit there and I do the bottom of the bases and stuff, like with the black heart models and with the backs of the bust, this is what I use: the Steinal Res black Prima. This is Badger. And I like it because, you know, using it for these kind of purposes is, you know, besides for priming and stuff, because, man, this paint takes a beating. Thank you. I hope Kirk will like him. I'm pretty sure Kirk will because nobody's, I don't think anybody's done him with this color scheme before. I think he was mostly done in like gray or definitely there was flesh that was done on, on, on him before, I think. But I wanted to go a different direction and kind of see what kind of crazy I can come up with. All right, definitely want to use a bigger brush for this. Where's my red one? There we go. This is a Monument Hobbies igniter in a size three. And I'm taking my matte varnish and Steinal Res Black and mixing it together. I still need to paint mine from four years ago. You do! Oh, you'll see, there's another bus that I'm planning on doing, possibly with oils, but I might most likely do it with airbrush because of the size of it. And it's uh, a piece from Underworld, one of the lichens. But I've thought about doing it in oils. I still got to do my amber, my amble in, in uh, oils too, right? That's what we agreed on. My GW amble from Blackstone Fortress. I still got to do that one in oils too. So yeah, I use this for the backs of the busts and everything. And basically I have to do about three coats, I want to say. Two to three, sometimes four depending.
trying to get around the edges, trying not to touch the areas that are oil painted. Because like I said, I, I don't mix. Like if it's dried up a little, because like the blue that you see here was thinned down a lot. So it's mostly already dry. So me putting the primer over, it's not going to hurt it. But like if let's say it was, you know, it was wet, I wouldn't have touched it because I wouldn't want the oil to get in a brush that I use for acrylics. There we go. <laughs> oh, you can get crazy. Yeah, I know. I sit there and sometimes, especially when I'm just, if it's something for mine, if it, I, I'm a lot more likely to sit there and do something crazy on something of my own than, than on a commission because, you know, a commission, a person paid me to do something a certain way. You know what I mean? go and get ready to do the next coat soon i'm listening while i'm working but i started putting together war machine figures last night maybe one day i'll start a twitch channel you should you should start a twitch channel honey i mean and then you can put that stuff on youtube too thank you orthober it's like operation don't touch the sides i know right hmm yeah, you got to make sure. Now with the shine on the eyes. I'm doing I'm doing the boop. The boop is happening. And I just got boop on my hand. There we go. Ah. Damn it. Come on, white, cooperate. The boop needs to cooperate. And I'm doing kind of an elongated boot because of the shape of the eyes. And I'm going to go back in with black and adjust because that came out a little messed up. This is the Reaper Pure Black that I'm doing in the eyes. Go back and fix that. Thank you. At your <laughs> yeah, here on this channel, when I sit there and do the whites of the eyes, we call it boop. I'm going to fix this one. This one's a little weirder than I want it to be. I'm going to fix that. It's definitely supposed to be a little bigger because of the size, the size of the eyes, but like not messed up like I just did. Oh, I see what I'm supposed to do. Okay.
giving it a little bit of a curved shape because of the size, because of the size and the shape of the eye. So that means I have to go back in and fix it again. That's all right though. When you paint an eye, it is all part of the process. Yeah, that works. That works. Wait, get the schmutz off that brush there. Little teeny tiny detail. When I did that boop, it came out a little with a little bit of a piece of black on there that didn't belong. There we go. Get that little tail that I put in that curve. Ha! Got it! Bam! Got him! Thank you, Robosh. Twerk squall boop. You're so silly. And I did that on purpose because I figured let's work on the eyes because that gives this a chance to dry before we do the next coat. But I'm going to blow on it a little bit too, so to expedite the process. But this is what I use for the boop of the eye. Golden acrylic and titanium white. Very, very highly pigmented white, which is great for those kind of things when you want to add that little extra bit of pop. And then one important part that has to be done to the eyes, which people always neglect and forget and mess up, or skip, I should say, is the gloss varnish for the eye, which that's what we'll do next after we get this next coat of black on the back of the base here. But yeah, so this is where we're at. What do you guys think? Do you like him? So this is by Collapse Industries, and this model is called the Interloper. And there's gonna, I see some areas of opportunity to fix certain things like. Say hello yeah. to my little friend. Who's following? Walking harder. <laughs> I like that. Thank you for the follow. Is that after Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story? Is that what that is that what that's about? Because that's what I think of when I saw your name. But yeah, there's going to be some little tweaks I might still do on him. Definitely some acrylic I'm going to add in some places just to add a little more definition in some spots. But other than that, I purposely didn't do that too even because if it's actually on skin, it's not going to be perfectly even. It actually is. Ah, I got it. That's awesome. So here's the shading, what we did, so you can see there's a little more blending I can do in the bottom here. Pull some paint. Be like, go over here. You, come here. Go over here. There we go. But yeah, that's other than that, this is really coming out. I'm happy with this. This is, I'm having a lot of fun with this. And I absolutely love, love, love working with oils. So, so I'm putting that Stino Res Black mixed with the matte varnish. And this is the second coat that I'm doing. Thank you. So yeah, this bust is by Collapse Industries, and if you like things like monsters and weird and UFO aliens, they even do Vikings and stuff like that. So he has all different kinds of... He also does flat reliefs, which you'll see me at some point do some of those too, because I have all those. 
but that's collapseindustries.com. Thank you, Sean. Welcome, welcome. So do that. I'm trying to be careful, so sorry if I'm getting quiet for a second. There we go. Whew. Whew. <laughs> There we go. Second coat. So definitely we're going to need a third. So we're going to let that dry. This side, some of it's already dry. So we're going to start covering that. There we go. Woohoo! So I'm going to clean up that brush. All right, now we're looking at the eyes here. Now we're ready to do some gloss varnish. And especially with the, when it comes to something like this with an alien, this is like super duper especially important. Because the alien's eyes are always shiny and stuff. Wait, I see an area of opportunity here. Hold on. put some magenta there because there's magenta here on this side too and that way it evens out get that filbert that way it's on both sides yeah you see stuff like this as you kind of go along so you just you just easily just add stuff and you go back in and you kind of dab it on and you're good. And you're golden. All right, let's get some gloss varnish on these eyes, shall we? You ahem, hurry up and paint. Hurry up and paint your holiday hellboy. How about that? Put a little more and I'm applying it on relatively liberally as in like not to the point where it'll pool in the oil paint areas but like so it'll apply right onto the eyes like it should nice and thick there because you want these eyes to basically shine like glass because basically they have like glass soulless eyes. Hold on, I found a little dust. And of course my eyebrow decides to itch at the same time. I'm trying to make sure to get any dust off of this. There we go. Because I saw like a little T. Oh, there it is. Crap. Oh. Yay, I got it. Victory. Okay. It was like a little teeny tiny hair. Like you almost couldn't hardly see it. But I saw it. <laughs> and I have OCD, so if I see it, then I'm going to think everybody on the planet sees it. Even though it's probably not true. Oh. But you'll see where the cotton and brush comes in in a second. Here we go. All right, so we got gloss varnish on the eyes. 
I'm gonna do a little more gloss varnish. Like I said, you want these eyes to shine like glass. Especially alien eyes like this. Aliens, frogs. There you go. Put a little more in that key so you can even see the shine on the camera. I want to paint, but no NYPD would look at me weird. Why? He'd kill things. It's funny. So see? Got those onyx eyes going. Yep, and I'm going to wait until this dries a little bit before I do the other, like, lining of the lips and stuff like that. Now we're going to do the next, the, the third and should be final coat of the Steinal Res Black with the matte varnish. It's Vallejo matte varnish also, just so you know. If I miss any of the Facebook chat, messages I will address them after because I noticed they come through but on one part of the screen and not the chat part and also I noticed it fades in and out pretty friggin quick so I'll see your message for like a second and it's easy for me to miss them I've been at least that's what I'm finding in my learning curve of streaming to two platforms at once Sorry, I'm being quiet so that I can not hit the oil painting parts. There we go, because I do not want to mix the two. Add a little more paint to this part here. There we go. There we go. Yay! Third coat, got it black. Look. There we go. I'm trying to see if there's any areas of opportunity that I can fix before I do the Cotman part, which actually I could still do after, but like, you know, do more adjustments after, I mean. But with the Cotman brush, you want to make sure there's no dust in this brush. You missed a spot. Thank you so much. Like doll eyes. Yeah, basically. All right, so the Cotman brush, super duper soft. You be super duper 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 gentle. Like hard, as if you're hardly touching the model. And basically what this Cotman brush does is it takes away the look of brush strokes on the figure from when you oil painted it. That's assuming there is any brush strokes. I'm finding that I manage because I've been developing more and more brush control with doing the oil painting. I'm finding that when I use the filbert part of the blending process that I actually manage to even get a lot of the brush strokes out then. So I don't really have to do much with this step. But what it's doing is it's taking out the brush strokes and making it even more look like it's all blended together. But you want to make sure no dust, no schmutz on this part because then what's going to happen is any of the brushing at that point that you do will get into the paint if there's any, you know, hairs or dust or anything in it. Sorry, I see a little bit of a detail to There we go. Yay! 
Okay, all right. So yeah, I managed to get a lot of that part out of the way when I used the filbert, but would it, but this really especially as you go along helps make things look even more. And you can see you have to really look at it, but you see a little bit of a difference. Thank you. So I definitely want to do it on the top head part, though, if for nothing else. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I put those brushes there so I can use the paper towel to clean that off. There we go. Clean that off a little more. And it's very little, but you can see very lightly some of the paint gets on there. It's very, very little, but you still want to keep it as you go along, especially when you're doing another whole colored pot. like a whole other section. There we go. I'm going to do a little more where the colors meet here. And that's making, helping it blend a little more. Yeah, that works. Yay! Oh, I just got a notification from Amazon. Stuff's on the way. See how it picks up some of that paint and why you got to clean it up as you go along. And then as we went along with the filbert to blend everything in, that's how much excess there was that I took off the brush too. So just so that, you know, you know. And I will clean these out with thinners afterward. I want more coffee first. Mm. Seeing if there's any areas of opportunity to fix. Blend that a little more. I see a little touch. The way to blend. There we go. Just a little bit. It's it's very little. Like it would be hard for you to see on camera to be completely honest, but I'm trying to just double checking myself basically. I'm gonna get ready to take this tape off too. All right, gonna be very gentle taking off this tape because I don't want to take the coating off of the ash wood on this plinth. I'm making sure to do it piece by piece so that way I don't end up taking off any paint as I go along. This is blue masking paper painters tape. It's cheap, you can get it at Home Depot, you can get it at a you know regular store. Just gently take it off. And there might be some paint that comes off in the bottom there. But I can just, you know, go in with a finer detail brush and just touch up where I need to, which is fine. See how I'm being gentle taking it off? So I don't take off the coating and I don't take off any paint. Careful, careful, careful. We got some oil paint there that's still wet. Bamskis. And I see that there's a little bit of black there that was covered with tape, but we just go in, touch up with the fine detail brush in the little areas where it needs to be done. 
get underneath there because there's a little bit of a pitting like an air bubble on the bottom there but I knew it would be covered up by the points so that's why I wasn't really worried about it touch up there get underneath some there we go A little bit on the corner there. There we go. There we go. All right, talk to me. What do you think? Now with the coating, it picks up dust. This coating is like a rough coating. It's not like a smooth coating that was put on this. So it picks up like little schmutz and dust and everything. So I gotta kind of wipe that off, but. Creepy, great job. Yay, how long will you be streaming for? Actually, uh, it's one, so I'm gonna get ready to get off. Actually, I've been up, I've been on two and a half hours and I'm getting hungry. Yeah, so I hope you guys really like it. I really had fun doing this one. Like I said, I'm going to let it dry for a few days before I do the next step, which is going to be some very, you know, some lining to show the texture and the skin and stuff like that. So there's still going to be that happening, but it's almost done. But see, in two and a half hours, for the most part, I just painted up for you guys a whole a whole bus. Well, we'll say three hours if you count in the priming and you know stuff like that. So if you count that in, I guess that would be more like you more more like three hours. But still to sit there and get a bus done in that amount of time, that's not exactly and then after you know counting if you count in the extra other details that I'll be putting in maybe four hours three and a half four hours I just saw an area of opportunity to fix this part of the head so I'm gonna put some more purple ah. oh that's a lot more than I wanted to put but that's okay because I can spread that around So yeah, a little area of opportunity there. I'm going to fix that real quick. It looks like a sea alien. Maybe. Maybe a sea alien. That could be interesting. Get that filbert brush back out. Blend that up. Yeah, you end up seeing tweaks as you go along, but why did they use a a vampire for that? That just sounds kind of weird. I'm sorry. Trying not to mix my acrylic brushes with the oil one. Jake, go over there. Go over there. You can't play with them. Okay. There we go. very gently here, taking off the excess. Pull that paint up. There we go. That looks a little more like what I was envisioning. And then pull up and then 
around, mode blend. There we go, that's more. Yay, I like that a lot better. Okay, I fixed it. And then I purposely got that, so that way that looks like a little bit of a spot that's on his head. And yeah, I'm gonna... I might go over that part again, I'm not sure, but I kind of like that it looks like it's part of not making his skin look perfect because it's not supposed to be perfect. There we go. So that's going to be the work in progress for now, and then wait a few days and then add in some finishing touches. So I hope you guys like it. I know I like it. I'm, I'm very happy with it so far. I'm having a grand old time with this. So yeah, so now I got a lot of commission stuff to do, and I have appointments to confirm for the week and stuff. So thank you so much for joining us today. Let's see who we're going to raid you guys off to. Let's see. Let's see. Who are we going to? Who are we going to? Who's on? Who's on? Let's see. Got to sit there and always refresh it. Oh, wow. Gen Con's just going all out, huh? Who do we got? Who do we got? Oh, wow. Warhammer's on and everything. Cool. All right, I got who I'm going to send you guys to. Is working on some good, uh, some good warhammery goodness. I'm going to send you guys over to Gray Paladin Art because we love Gray Paladin Art. He's one of our buddies. Oh, the Christmas stockings came in. Oh, that means I'm going to be wrapping up some kiddo gifts. Just it just said that it just got delivered, which means some stocking stuffers got delivered too. Yep, says your stocking stuffers were delivered. Yep. All right, so I'm going to send you guys over to Great Paladin. Give Great Paladin lots of love. Let's raid him. Like, just go all out, okay? And then we'll be back on, on Friday. Uh, I might stream tomorrow. No, wait, I'm not streaming tomorrow because I might be in Houston. So, yeah. So, if not, though, but if I don't stream tomorrow, I'll be on on Friday. So, thank you guys so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day.